All right, so we're looking at Aaron's pattern here, and we've got step zero, step two, so skip step one, and then we have step three. And we're given those three steps, and we want to analyze this pattern in every way we can. So let's think about the colors of the pixels. We've got blue, we've got red, we've got green. Let's think about the number of pixels, the total number, and I'm just calling these little squares here, pixels. So for example, on step zero, there are one, two, three, four pixels. We'll also look at the height of the shape and the width of the shape uh, with, each, with each step. Uh, we'll look at the graph of them, uh, the equations, and then that's it. So uh, a lot of things to track here. Let's start with what I think is uh, the most manageable, and that's the number of blue pixels, right? Because we start here in step zero with four blue pixels, and then you can see in step two, right, there are still four blue pixels, so we don't really know what happened in step one yet, but we know that the step number, step three, all the steps we're given don't seem to affect the blue pixels. So for the blue, we can say, all right, what's the equation gonna be? Well, blue is a function of the step number that we're on, so all right, BS, which is kind of funny, um, always equals four, right? B as a function of step number is four. And if I was to ask you, okay, how many blue pixels would there be at 100? Step 100, you would say B at step 100 would still equal four. Nothing's changing there. Um, I think you know step step one is missing, but I can see that two things happen in step two. We've got these four red pixels, which I think were added in step one, and in step two it looks like we added these four green pixels. I can tell that's true because when I go from step two to step three, only these four red pixels are added. So let's say we're, we're, we're adding uh, groups of four, four red and four green, but we're adding them alternately between steps. So if we look at the number of red and green pixels as a function of time, so like this, red and green is a function of time, um, all together, that always equals what? Well, we start off at zero, but then we add four for every step. And oops, I wrote T here because that was... In some of these cases, I keep using T for time. Look at S there. Um, red and green is a function of our step number. We start off at zero, but then we add four for every step. So if I was to ask you how many red and green altogether, not one or the other, but altogether, would there be at step uh, 100, you would just plug 100 in for S. So zero plus four S, or four times 100, and that means there would be 400 red and green pixels. In total, how many total pixels would there be? Well, the total pixels, that's going to be, say, t is a function of, t of step number. We start off with the four blue, and we kind of add these two together, because there's only blue and red and green, and there's really nothing else. So it's four plus four s, right? That means we start off with those four blue pixels, and then we add four red or, gre or green with each step. So if I say, okay, well, how many would there be at step 100? Well t of 100 would simply equal 4 plus 4 times 100, or 4 plus 400, which is 404. Now let's look at the width and the height. So the width, let's say that is going to call, be called the width as a function of step number. First our width is 2. Then, well in step 1 we just add one stack of red here and one stack of red on the other side, so that width at step one would be four, and then here at step two, the one we see here, the width is actually six. And we know that the widths then are going up by two each time. So it starts off at two, and it adds two for every second. And the width at step 100 would simply equal, plug 100 in for s, two times 100 plus two is 202. The height as a function of the step number. Well, h as a function of step number equals, well, we start off with two here, and then uh, in step one, we add height, one to the top, one to the bottom. And then each time we add another one to the top, one to the bottom. Just like with width, we're adding two per second, two plus, two per step, right? Same formula and actually same result. The height and the width are equal in all of these shapes. Now in the graph, uh, the blue uh, always equals four no matter what. So here, let's just say we have a line at four for blue. And you could write B as a function of steps. Red and green, let's use 
just red for that. That's what's over four, and it goes up four for every second. So at one second, I should be go from four to eight, then to 12, then to 16. With each second that passes, I go up four. And what I would like to see are those landmark points. So if this is your graph, make sure I have some of those landmark points in there. And this is red and green as a function of step number. <coughs> Our total is just the sum of these two, and I'll, I'll make that, um, let's see, red plus blue. It's like a purple, so let's make a purple. Um, that's going to start at 4 and go up 4 per second. Oh, my gosh. I actually graph, when I said I was graphing red and green, I was actually graphing the total. So I put that back on there. <laughs> The total starts up at four and goes up four for every second. Oh boy, sorry about that. Label those points, right? We start from four, then we go to eight, then 12, then 16, and so on and so forth. That's a straight line, sorry. So that's total as a function of step number. Uh, but the red and the green start with nothing. There's none in the beginning, but it'll be parallel to this one. The second one goes to four, then it goes to eight, then it goes to 12, then it goes to 16, so on and so forth. So you can see these two are actually parallel because they both increase at the same rate. It's just that red and green start off lower. Now, I'm just going to double check that this is actually parallel. Let's see, 16, 12. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to label these points here so you can see that. Oops. It might be slightly off, but that's it. And then the width and the height, I'm just going to graph in black. It starts off at 2, and it goes up 2 per second. Use my line tool here. Up two, up two, up two, up two, up two, so on and so forth. You might actually graph the points first because you're probably not using a line tool like this. Up two over one, up two over one. And this is uh, both the, the width and the height. So I'm going to write it down width based on step number equals height based on step number. All right, now let's talk about red and green. Um, here, I would like to see the graph for just the red pixels and just the green pixels because they grow in an interesting way. So what we can track is the red and the green over, let's say, the first five steps. If you think about what's going to happen, the red and green both start off at zero. At step one, we gain four red, but are still at zero green. At step two, we still have those four red, but we, now we add four green. And that this pattern now holds. It goes up to eight. 8, 12, 12, so on and so forth. The greens, 4, 4, 8, 8. The greens are always 4 behind the red, except when they catch up in these little moments here. But the red then always beats the green by moving 4 ahead. The green will never pass the red. What does the graph of these does it look like? Well, let's do the red first. So at step 0, we're at 0 pixels. And it stays at 0 until exactly 1, the first step. And then at that point, it goes up to 4 pixels. And it stays at 4 pixels until we reach step 3. At step 3, it jumps up to 8 again, and then stays there, and then jumps again to 12, and so on and so forth. So we have the step pattern here for the red. Now let's look at the green. The green um, stay at 0 for longer. They stay at 0 until you reach step 2. So here, if I drew the green, it stays at 0, and then at step 2, it jumps up to 4. Then it jumps... Uh, once again, we at step, I think, let's see, at step four again, it jumps to eight. So here, I'll just open the circle at four. All oh, these open circles just mean, if you look at step four, don't include that point there, right? But it gets really, you know, infinitely close to it. As you get closer and closer, it still stays uh, at four pixels. But then at step four, precisely when we reach step four, it jumps up to eight. That's what's happening here. So this, the green step function looks something like this. Now let's talk about step function equations. Um, so there's lots of things we can analyze here as a step function, but to keep it simple, to start off somewhere easy, um, I recommend you look at the step function for uh, the width or the height. I'll show you the step function for the total number of pixels. You find the step function for the width or the height. It's a nice check challenge. So if you go back to the uh, total pixels, um, there are, let's see, the total pixels is a function of step number. We start with four total pixels, and then we add four for every step. All right. So, so this is, uh, let's give us a line, right? And the line looked like this. It starts up at four, and then it goes, every second goes up four. Yay. 
right? This is what we just showed before. But this line technically does not represent this thing because really uh, this line is growing constantly, but the pixels aren't growing constantly. They're growing in chunks. They only change when you have a new step. So in between steps, there should be no change, but this line is changing constantly and it doesn't match. So the way we usually get this to, to match that kind of step function, which we just saw with, with the way we graphed it uh, and for the red or the green, is to usually um, use two kinds of brackets. We can use floor brackets, that means you round down, or ceiling brackets like this, which means you round up. Let's just try the floor brackets and see if this gives us what we need. Sometimes we can leave everything else the same in our function, but just change the way we round our variable. So here's what I mean. If we look at the little table for steps, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we look at the total pixels. Well, let's see. The total pixels should go 4, and then it should go to 8, and then it goes 12, 16, 20, and 24. That's, that is what our equation gives us so far. But this rounding would take things like 2 and a half. And if we took the 2 and a half step, and plug it into this, we should still get 12 total pixels. There should be no change. So let's try that. So if we plug in total pixels at two and a half, and we're rounding down, let's see if that works. Four plus four times two and a half rounded down. So rounded down to the nearest whole number. So it's four plus four times two. And that equals eight. It's working. Let's plug in three and a half. T of three and a half should give us, if this formula is correct, 16, because at the third and a half step, there is no change, so nothing should happen. It should still be 16. So if we take four and we add four times three and a half rounded down, we get three and a half rounded down is three, times four is 12, plus four is 16. And it's working. So this formula represents the step function for total pixels, and what we would see is, it looks just like this, but it stays at four until the first second, and then it jumps up to eight. And then it stays at eight until two, step two, I'm saying seconds, sorry. And then it jumps up to 16, it stays there. So you see that there's the, the line, the linear function intercepts the step function at these beginning points, right? But that's it. Um, there's a big difference then other than that. So I'd like you to find the step function for width and height, uh, width or height. Uh, doesn't really matter, they're equal in your pattern, and let's see what you get. Thanks.